Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Hey, let's take a look at the book of John, chapter, I guess we'll start in chapter 1, but we're going to do mostly the text of chapter 2. We're going to take a look at the wedding in Cana. All right, we might read the whole chapter of John chapter 1, but then again, might just skip around a little bit. I don't want to make this too long. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. What beginning? Well, probably the beginning of the earth. When you look at when you look at the word uh, well, the book of Genesis, the first four letters is gene, G E N E, which is where they get, you know, the the genetics and uh, you know, it means uh, what, you know, a generator what does a generator do? It produces electricity, right? Uh, generation, the having of children. It means it has reference to creating something. Although if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll try to tell you that Jesus is a created be being. No, but he was around at the beginning of the earth. He was already around. You know, he didn't have a beginning. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The, the Word was around from the very beginning. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then they'll insert that little, uh, the Word was a God. It's funny, they'll, uh, they'll deny the Godhead and say, well, oh, you believe in the Trinity. But then they have two gods. They have God the Father and a God, which is God, uh, Jesus, the Son of God. And if you can figure that logic out, uh, let me know, because I, I don't get it. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Christ created everything. I mean, you know, the Bible says God created everything, and the Bible says that Christ created everything. You know, do the math. Algebra. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. If God created everything and Christ created everything, that means Christ is God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He, John, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which light lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He, Christ, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons, plural, the sons of God, 
even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, of course, everybody that's born in the flesh is born of blood, you know, but, uh, but there's two births to those that are in Christ. There's the physical birth, and then there's the spiritual rebirth. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Oh boy, they have a problem with that. See, this is why I say stick around with the King James. I mean, there's just, you know, the modern perversions change everything. And of course, they'll say, well, you know, it's because of copyright issues. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with copyright. They want to change everything so that you don't realize that Jesus was God in the flesh. And the Word was made flesh. And if you don't believe that, may I suggest you read 1 Timothy 3.16. Oh, that's right. Paul wrote that. That's why they don't like Paul. So let's do a little detour here and read 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hmm. Okay, John 1.14 and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. See, there's a big difference between being a son of God or the sons of God and being the only begotten son of God. Big difference. Begotten of the Father. Christ is of the same essence as the Father. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. Now, how is that possible? Christ is uh, before him, John. John was six months older than Jesus, I approximately. You know, uh, Elizabeth, who had John, the babe leaped in her womb when Mary was pre just became pregnant. John, with a body, was older than Christ, but yet he says here, for he was before me. Well, yeah, he was before John, even though John was born before Christ. So we're talking spiritual here. Verse 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And uh, those of you that hear all this garbage about dispensational theology, well, dispensation means, uh, comes from the word dispense, which means to give something. And then they'll tell you there's seven or 14 or whatever, 33 maybe dispensations. No, there's two dispensations in the Bible. It's called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. 
or the Old Testament and the New Testament. The law and grace. For the law was given by Moses. That's what it means. God the Father dispensed the law, gave the law to Moses, who gave it to Israel. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So what do you want? You want grace and truth or do you want the law? Well, the Antichrists want the law, but they don't really keep it. They just pretend. See, that's, you know, dispensation. Yeah, if you go to a Baptist church, uh, you're going to be told, oh, there are seven dispensations. Of course, the word dispensation only appears in the Bible four times. How do you get seven dispensations out of a word that appears four times? Uh, I didn't learn that in college mathematics. Uh, I'm sorry, but, you know. They try to teach me that garbage in Bible college, but uh, I fail to see it. Verse 18. No man hath seen God at any, at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? In other words, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? That's the Greek rendering of the word Elijah. The Bible says that Elijah will come. Uh, Elijah is going to come before Christ comes. Maybe we should take a look at that real quick. All right, so the uh, Levites are asking John, you know, who are you? Are you Elias? The Greek rendering of Elijah. And he says, nope, not me. Because they knew that uh, Elijah the prophet would come and that is recorded in the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 5. And if you're interested, you can read Malachi chapter 4. He says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. Well, you know, if you're in Christ, it's not going to be a dreadful day of the Lord. It's going to be a day of redemption for those in Christ. You know who it's going to be dreadful for? The wicked. So, you know, this is going to be when Elijah comes before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's going to be judgment upon an evil world. Did Christ uh, come to bring judgment immediately upon an evil world? Uh, no, he brought us grace and truth in his first appearance. But when he comes the second time, Look out, buddy boy. They're going to be crawling into their holes and asking the rocks to fall on them. So let's go back to John 1, 21. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Now there's people say, Oh yeah, John the Baptist was Elijah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They asked him if he was Elias. And he says, I am not. And he said, no. I mean, really, John? You think John the Baptist doesn't even know who he is? Really? I mean, this is the kind of trickery people get into, you know. And another thing, too. How could Elijah 
get reincarnated into John. I mean, really? You know, I don't think so. All right, let's take a look at the book of Luke chapter 1 real quick. Um, how far should I go back? Yeah, let's start back at the beginning. Luke 1, 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses and minister of ministers of the world, word, ministers of the word. It seemeth good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the uncertainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. This is John the Baptist's parents, okay? Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. They're old. You know, once a woman gets over, uh, you know, about 40 years old, it's usually it's over. I, you know, you just don't have children when you get past 40 years old. If you're a female. Verse 7. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. I guess you could say, holy smoke, right? And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. An angel of the Lord. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. I think I'd be scared too. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. You know, the uh, angel, an angel did the same thing with Mary and Joseph and said, Call him Jesus. But you know what? When you hear these people use Yeshua stuff, you know, they're denying the Bible. I mean, they are. They are absolutely denying the Bible. Some of them because they listen to you-know-who fables. Others because they're just out-and-out -out deceivers. Take your pick. An angel named John and an angel named Jesus, Jesus. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many, many, not all, many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah, right? Greek rendering. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Huh. So he's going to go before Christ in the spirit and power of Elias, of Elijah. So, you know, the time of grace and truth when Christ was here to redeem his people, John the Baptist was in the spirit and power of Elijah or Elias. But the next time when he comes, it's not going to be the Lamb of God. It's going to be the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And the Lion's going to rip them apart. So, John 1, 21. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? He answered, no. John, know, John knew who he was. He's in the spirit and power of Elijah. He's filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Just like Elijah was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, John, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet people there are uh let's see from what i understand there's three baptisms one there's a baptism when you're born you ever heard the expression a pregnant woman's getting ready to have birth her water broke oh yeah that's that's you know, that's that's one baptism. Then you got a baptism where people come to the Lord and they say, hey, I want to be baptized. What did John do? He baptized people in the River Jordan. And then there's the spiritual baptism. Baptism of uh, the Holy Spirit, which uh, there's a certain group and calls itself a church that... Uh, speaks a lot of gibberish and uh, they call that baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, huh but then Christ talked about a baptism of fire so actually there's four really so let's go to for the tongue talker things, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is Paul. You know, the guy that uh, a lot of people hate. Yeah. I know why they hate him. Because they hate Christ, too. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Uh, when we start talking about tongue talkers, we're talking about those uh, like... Kenneth Copeland, yeah, it, it slays me that, uh, well, not slain in the spirit, uh, but, you know, he's, uh, he supposedly is the, the richest uh, church, uh, I guess you could say leader or whatever, of all the TV evangelists. He's supposedly worth a billion dollars. Do you know a billion is 1,000 millions yeah yeah jesus said he didn't even have a place to lay his head i wonder if kenneth copeland would buy uh, jesus a cup of coffee i doubt it but okay they're the tongue talkers first corinthians 14 26 how is it then 
Brethren, when ye are come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, we're talking about language, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Listen to this carefully. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three, and that by course. In other words, you get two or three people, one says something, stops, another says something, stops, another says something, stop. No more than two or three. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent, silence in the church. Huh. You know, I've been to Pentecostal churches. None of them follows this. Which, if they were truly were led of the Holy Spirit, they would follow this. But they don't, so it must be a different spirit. Yeah, you know, the other guy? Yeah. But if there be no interpreter, let him shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. There you go. Hmm. So let's go back to John. So remember, you got, when you're born, you're baptized by the, a woman break, you know, her water broke. You can get baptized in a, you know, a body of water, washing of the flesh. There's going to be a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then there's going to be a baptism of fire. So basically four baptisms. And the fire is going to burn up all the works of the flesh. I think I did an entire Bible study on that. You know, if you go to my home page and there's a little bar there. It says uh, home, videos, community page. If you go to the right side all the way, there's like a little magnifying glass. Uh, you could go to the magnifying glass, type in like fire, and then click enter. And all the videos I did with fire in them will pop up. Now I'm just saying, you know, I'm not telling you to do that. Just, you know, if you're interested in a certain subject like water or fire, that's an easy thing to do. And it'll go through all my studies. So John 1, 25, and they asked him and said unto him, why baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Abara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Well, what's going on with a lamb? Well, if you'd read the book of Exodus, you'd know that the Lord told Moses to tell everybody, take a lamb, kill it, and take the blood and put it over the doorposts, the lentil of the house. And then when the angel of death came, it would pass over 
the house and not enter into the house to kill the firstborn. That's why reading the Old Testament is so important, people. I, I can't stress it enough. I, and these idiot, idiots that uh, claim to be pastors, oh, well, we're, we're New Testament Christians. That Old Testament, that's for the you-know-whos. We don't read that. Well, if you don't understand the old, uh, you can't have a very deep understanding of the new. But that's the plan. They don't want you to know much about this stuff. And then when they do read the new, they, the, the New Testament, they're, oh, this doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, of course not. Because all the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. Especially the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is full of symbolism from the Old Testament. Full of it. Oh, I read Revelation. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, duh idiots fools anybody would trust a man anybody would trust a salvation with a man except for Christ who is not a mere man is a fool and none of you better ever follow me unless I'm leading you to Jesus don't ever follow me I will let you down God's, Paul said to let God be true and every man a liar. Well, that makes, that makes me too. This is he. Okay, the next day, uh, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, him and saith, the, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Yeah. Christ was before John, even though John in the flesh was older than Christ. For he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Now, what is baptizing with water? It's kind of a ceremonial cleansing of the flesh, not of the spirit, just basically a washing of the sin of the flesh. And remember, we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. We are a being composed of three different parts. And there's people say, oh, well, that's not true. Well, <laughs> you know, how many different organs are in your body? You got a liver, you got a stomach, a heart, you got lungs, you know, you got eyes, you got feet, you got hands. How many parts makes up one body? You know, I mean, think about it. You know, without the feet, the eyes can't go anywhere. And without the hands, the feet can't pick hardly anything up. For he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John and John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Christ is going to baptize his people with the Holy Ghost. Very important. And I've had people say, oh, the Bible says we need to be baptized to be saved. Is it 
talking about getting your body wet? I don't think so. I think it's talking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to, you know. That's what I think. When the Bible says, you know, be baptized, I think that's what it's talking about. But that's just my opinion. And you got a whole, I think it's Church of Christ. Uh, their, their founder was a guy named Campbell. And if memory serves me correctly, they actually teach that if you don't get dunked in water, you're, you can't be saved. Uh, what? I think it's more important to be dunked with the Holy Spirit. But, hey, that's just my opinion. Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth, with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Now, if you doubt the uh, Holy Ghost uh, and fire baptism, well, let me give you Luke 3, 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. Oh yeah, I baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Is there a second witness? Uh, Matthew 3.11 I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. See, that's what the, the water baptism, getting the flesh wet is. It's repenting of the works of the flesh. You know, the filth of this world. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, all the works of the flesh are going to be burned with fire. Think about it. In the book of Daniel, the three Hebrew children, they were thrown into the furnace. Were they hurt? No. Uh-uh. Matter of fact, there was a fourth man in the fire to protect them. Probably Christ himself. Were they burned up? No. The soldiers that were charged with throwing them in the fire, they were burned up. And then Nebuchadnezzar told them, Come forth. Come here. I mean, can you imagine that? Nebuchadnezzar got uh, humbled a few times, you know? A few times. And you would think his son would have known better, but no. All right, let's go back to John chapter 1, verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? You know, somebody will, I've had a lot of people say, oh, Rabbi means teacher. Uh, well, that's not what the book of John says. So are you going to believe the Bible or are you going to believe some Hebrew roots Judaizer? Take your pick. Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He, Jesus, he saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelleth and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's 
brother. According to history and legend, I don't know, Andrew went to Greece and helped found uh, the Greek Orthodox Church. And he was a brother of Peter. Verse 41, he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation, a stone. A stone, okay? Uh, and then the Roman Catholic Church will say, oh, well, P Peter founded the Roman Catholic Church, and he's the rock. You know, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Well, a stone and a rock, are they the same? You know, you've heard of the Rock of Gibraltar. It's huge. But a stone you can hold in your hand. So is Peter really the rock upon which the church was built on? Uh, I don't know. Let's ask the Bible here. All right, well, let's find out who this rock is. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now remember, Corinth was a city in Greece, and the Corinthians were the residents of the city. And guess who wrote Corinthians? Oh, that's right, that person Paul that all the Hebrew roots people hate. Yeah, that guy. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Uh, ignorant uh, means you lack knowledge in a certain thing, right? So Paul doesn't want you to be ignorant. He wants to enlighten you. He wants to give you knowledge. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What's he talking about here? The exodus of Egypt when Israel left. There was a cloud during the day, and there was a pillar of fire by night, and they passed through the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. Unless, of course, you listen to heretics, they'll say that, uh, oh, well, no, no, no. They didn't pass through the Red Sea. They went through the Sea of Reeds, and a reed is just a plant. And they want you to think that uh, Israel passed through ankle-deep water, in the Sea of Reeds. And they say, see, that was that was the miracle. Now, the miracle was uh, Pharaoh's army drowning in ankle-deep water. Yeah, that would have been the real uh, miracle, right? No, they passed through the Red Sea, just like the Bible says. You know, people go to Bible college to learn this kind of garbage. I... That's the problem. People, uh, instead of being led of the Spirit, they're ordained of Bible college. The only reason I went to Bible college is so that I could learn their lies to be able to refute them. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers, what fathers? Our fathers of Israel. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. See, when they went through the Red Sea, it was a type of baptism. Verse 3, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. What meat was that? Uh, manna? Verse 4. 
and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Remember now, Moses struck the rock and it gave them water in the desert. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Peter. No. And that rock was Christ. See, the Roman Catholic Church doesn't even know this Bible verse exists. And that rock was Christ. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, my church, the ch Christ church. It's not Peter's church. Idiots. All I got to do is read the Bible. John chapter 1, verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is, by interpretation, a stone. There's a big difference between a stone and a rock. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Evidently, Nazareth was not a great place, right? I guess. Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Hey, come on, dude. Check it out for yourself. You can look with your own eyes and, you know, you decide. That's the Bob translation. Verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. What is guile? Trickery. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Where do you know me from? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God, the angels of God, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Well, this is going to be uh, part one. I'm going to have to do a multi-part story study i haven't even read the opening text yet so this is going to be on the wedding of cana but before i got there i got to get to john chapter 2 you know I had to read john 1 before i could get to john 2 because the wedding at cana is full of symbolism full of it and no, I'm not saying the Bible's full of it. I've known people that are full of it, but the Bible's full of truth, but the people are full of something else. So, alrighty, uh, this is the end of part one. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.